Now, usually on this program, we talk to the players. We ask Premier Doug Ford to join us. He was not available. He said the buck stops with him. He said he owns this crisis, couldn't be here. We asked the Minister of Long-Term Care, Marilee Fullerton, to join us. She said she was unavailable. No one from the Ford government Ontario would join us to discuss this situation. We also asked the federal liberal, liberal government. The Minister of Emergency Services, Bill Blair, received the military report. We asked him to join us. He was unavailable. So was the Minister of Defense. So were the health ministers. Literally both governments who promised to fix this have refused to come on this program to discuss it. Make of that what you want. But we do have many other voices, beginning with Ontario Liberal leader Stephen Del Duca, who did accept our invitation. Mr. Del Duca, thank you for joining us, and I appreciate you uh, being here. Uh, it was a staggering report. It wasn't a surprising report. Who's accountable? Yeah, so, I mean, first of all, thanks for having me on, Evan. I'm really happy to have the chance to talk about this. And I heard in the introductory comments what you had talked about with other political leaders today expressing their shock, their outrage, their heartbreak. I mean, I think all of those words are accurate. Those are the kinds of words that people would use to describe this kind of, uh, this kind of report. But at the end of the day, they're words. And to me, what we need now urgently is not more rhetoric, not more words, even if they're heartfelt. We actually need action. We need someone to step up and decide very quickly what can be done in the short term to make sure that our aging parents and grandparents are properly taken care of. And that can be done starting tomorrow. Well, what should be done? Look, uh, Premier Ford of Ontario has asked the military to extend again. They've already been extended once. Um, outside of the military staying there, and I spoke to the Minister of Defence a couple of weeks ago, he said, look, we can't stay there for that much longer. What can be done right now? So three very concrete actions the Premier can take today. He could take them tomorrow, and I urge him to do so. Number one, stop being stubborn around the need for an independent public inquiry. I know that might sound like it's just semantics, but it's not. There needs to be on the other side of this pandemic, as I have called for, and the SEIU has called for, and other political leaders have called for, a fully independent public inquiry. That's number one. Number two, a number of weeks ago, thanks largely to funding from the federal government, uh, the province of Ontario helped increase the amount of money, the compensation that our frontline workers in health care and long-term care receive. Let's make that wage enhancement permanent. Let's make sure that the work those women and men, and frankly, mostly women, are doing in those long-term care homes is properly compensated. And thirdly, there's nothing at all that stops the Premier and his government from tomorrow announcing new standards of care or standards of care that actually will keep the residents in those long-term care homes safe and give them the dignity that they are, that they need. So those three things can be done tomorrow. I know this is part of a much larger conversation that we need to have in this province and in this country about home care, about long-term care, about retiring with dignity. But tomorrow, the Premier can step up and show leadership and take concrete action, and I urge him to do so. All right. Well, to be fair, he is open to a public inquiry, he hasn't said he would do one, and they have topped up the money. I don't know if that's going to be enough. Should the Minister of Long-Term Care, and the Ford government's the first government to have one of those, Marilee uh, uh, Fullerton, should she resign, as Andrea Horvath has called for? Yeah, look, I, again, I, I don't want us to descend into the political back and forth, that rhetoric, that partisanship. This is not a time for any of that. Uh, it'll be for others to judge whether or not she should continue to serve in that role. But a ministerial resignation won't make life any easier or safer or healthier tomorrow afternoon in a long-term care home in Etobicoke or Ottawa or Thunder Bay. The Premier has the authority. He said it. He's right about this. The buck does stop with him. I know. I've had the chance to serve inside that cabinet room. He has the authority to take concrete steps tomorrow that will actually start to make life better while we have a longer-term conversation over the next number of weeks and months. But the reason there is there's a need for accountability is because there's a competence problem here. This has been going on for years. If the buck stops with Doug Ford government, it also should stop with the Liberal government. I mean, to be candid, the former Liberal government also, who were in power for more than a decade, let inspections lapse. Uh, there was huge problems. The former Liberal government didn't fix it. It's not just the Ford government problem. Why, why didn't the former Liberal government fix this? So, look, I, I can tell you that while I had the chance to serve in Cabinet, we did take some concrete action in long-term care to make the situation better. A couple of really uh, important examples. We, uh, we authorized the rehabilitation of somewhere around 16,000 beds in long-term care. And also, just prior to the 2018 election, we announced that 
we would be allotting 5,000 licenses to build new long-term care beds, beds that haven't been built as of yet. This is not my way of suggesting that there isn't a need for accountability going back through many years. There is. That's why I'm in search of answers. To me, this is not a partisan issue. This is why I don't no, want to get. No, into but to be fair, but to be fair, but to be what? fair, it's going to be partisan. People are dying, sir. Like, there are hundreds and thousands of people. Thousands of senior citizens have died. In 2015, the the Auditor General Bonnie Lissick said your government wasn't even inspecting the poorly run long term care facilities. So, why why is it that every politicians love to take credit when things are good, but when things are bad, they say let's not get political? Why isn't there accountability here? Yeah, so I think there should be accountability, and that's actually what I was driving at. So the reason I've called for a, poll, a full public inquiry, and in fact, the reason I was the first political leader in Ontario to make that call, was because I'm looking for answers. To me, we can relitigate the past all we want, but that's not going to make life better tomorrow in long-term care homes in the province of Ontario. That's why I've said the Premier can take, and I hope he does, I sincerely hope he does, and I'll be the first one to applaud him if he does, take that concrete action tomorrow, and then... Let's work together, Liberal, NDP, Conservative, Greens, and others, uh, with those working in the system to make the system better for, for those going forward. Because what we saw today is not acceptable in Ontario, it's not acceptable in Canada, and there's got to be a better way for us to do this. Uh, Stephen Del Duca, thank you for joining us. I appreciate your perspective on it, sir. Thanks. Thank you, Evan. Take care.